हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई होप यू आर डूइंग वेरी गुड सो वेलकम बैक टू योर वेरी ओन एम सी क्यू सीरीज सो एज यू नो दैट वी हैव स्टार्टेड विद द एम सी क्यू सीरीज वेर एन यूल गेट फाइव टू सेवन क्वेश्चन पर्टेनिंग टू सिक्योरिटीज लॉ एंड टू डेज लेक्चर विल बी द ट्वेल्थ लेक्चर ऑफ दिस वीडियो सीरीज दिस वीडियो सीरीज विल बी क्वाइट हेल्पफुल फॉर यू फॉर योर अपकमिंग सेवी ग्रेडेड ट्वेंटी नाइनटीन एग्जामिनेशन सो लेट स्टार्ट विद दिस वीडियो एंड बिफोर जम्पिंग ऑन टू द फर्स्ट एम सी क्यू ऑफ दिस वीडियो सीरीज लेट मी ग्रैप दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी एंड लेट यू नो अबाउट द एक्सलेंट रिजल्ट प्रोड्यूस बाई So for the year 2017 with respect to RBI grade B examination we got 27 final selections and 11 final selections with respect to NABARD grade A exam for the next year that is 2018 our results improved drastically and we got 70 plus final selections in RBI grade B and 26 final selections in NABARD grade A exam for the same year that is 2018 with respect to SEBI grade A examination our results are overwhelming out of 84 candidates selected 41 were from EDUTAB So I would like to take this moment and congratulate all the selected candidates for putting in their hard work and effort and making it up to the final list. And when it comes to IBPS Agriculture Field Officer Exam, we got hundred plus interview calls. So hope so that we get a good number of selection in this exam too. So if you want to know more about the courses being offered by EduTab, you can take a quick snapshot of this slide. We offer individual courses of the mentioned examination, which include RBI Grade B, SEBI Grade A, NAVAD Grade A, RBI Assistant, and IBPS Agriculture Field Officer. We even offer combo courses with respect to the mentioned combos of RBI NABARD SEBI, RBI NABARD SEBI RBI, and NABARD SEBI. So you can opt for any of our combo courses based upon your own exam preferences. We are glad to announce that we have launched a new course that is QRE course that is for all banking examination. Three aspects will be particularly covered in this course, and those three aspects are quantitative aptitude, reasoning ability, and English. So wrapping up with the introduction part and moving on to the first MCQ of this video series. So let's move on to the next slide. So as per our first question given below are three statements related to underwriter which of them is slash are correct so three statements related to underwriter are given and we need to identify which of them are correct so as per statement 1 a company must receive a minimum of 80% of subscription against its entire issue before making any allotment to public okay as per statement 2 in case of failure to achieve minimum subscription entire subscription will be refunded Okay as per statement 3 an underwriter charges an underwriting commission for the services rendered by it okay so we have been given with three statements perfectly related to underwriter and we need to find out which of them are correct so this question is basically testing your basic awareness of what underwriter is and what are the minimum percentages related to subscription with respect to public issue so let's learn about this question in the explanation part in more detail so moving on to the next slide So what basically underwriter is we'll try to decode in this slide so before jumping on to what does underwriter do let's see what are the minimum percentage of subscription that a company must receive in order to get that public issue a valid one so as per our first point a company must receive a minimum subscription of 90% against the entire issue before making any allotment to public so the minimum bar which is set for the public issue to be a valid one is 90% and the next point says that if a company does not receive that minimum subscription of 90% of that issue then the entire subscription shall be cancelled and it shall be refunded to the applicants so let's understand this point with the help of an example so suppose we have a company named india mart and it is attempting to raise money through an ipo and that ipo has a size of 100 crore so based upon the response given by public that ipo can be fully subscribed or be partly subscribed Suppose in case that IPO has been subscribed to 50% extent that is only 50 crores and 50 crores are left behind so in that case how will that company make sure that IPO attempted by it becomes a valid one so in order to safeguard that IPO or public offer from getting invalidated the work of underwriter comes in so what does this underwriter do if public do not subscribe fully to the public offer the underwriter ensures that whatever is the extent of unsubscribed portion of shares or debentures that will be taken up by him so suppose 50 crores have been subscribed by public and 40% which is minimum required is left behind so that 40% will be covered by underwriter and hence that public offer will be validated and for doing this thing underwriter takes a commission and that commission is called as underwriting commission this is basically a fee charged by the underwriter for this contract So let's understand the same example with the help of visuals. So moving on to the next slide. Suppose this is a company which is attempting to raise money through the IPO and the offer size is of rupees hundred crore. 
So the public response with respect to this IPO is not that exciting and the public subscribed only to 50% of that offer size that is 50 crores rupees and the minimum offer size which has to be subscribed in order to be a valid one is 90% as we all know. So rest 40% has been subscribed by this underwriter. So whatever unsubscribed portion or leftover portion by the public is there that is subscribed by the underwriter and for this underwriter charges a fee that is called underwriting commission. So I hope that by now everything related to underwriter will be crystal clear. So let's move back to our question number one and let's see now we can solve it or not. So moving back to our question, moving on to the next slide. So let's read out the statement once again and identify which of them are correct. So as per statement one, a company must receive a minimum of 80% of subscription against its entire issue before making any allotment to public. So we know that this statement is wrong because minimum percentage of subscription which is required for offer to be a valid one is 90%. So hence 80% is wrong. So this statement is wrong. So as per statement two, in case of failure to achieve minimum subscription, entire subscription will be refunded. This statement is perfectly correct. As per statement three, underwriter charges an underwriting commission for the services rendered by it. This statement is also correct. So now we can clearly make out that statement one is wrong and statement two and three are correct and we need to identify the correct one. So here option B which states statement two and statement three only becomes our correct option. So it's time to move to our next question. So moving on to the next slide. So as per question number two, which of the following act as a counterparty for the trades being executed on exchange? So following list of entities are mentioned in the option and we need to find out which of the entities mentioned in the option act as a counterparty on the trades being executed on exchange. So in the list of option, option A says depository, option B says depository participant, option C says stock brokers, option D says clearing corporation, option E says both C and D that is stock brokers and clearing corporation. So this question can be a little tricky one for some of us because of the confusing option given. Nonetheless, if your concepts are clear, you can easily answer this question. So let's learn something more about this question in the explanation part. So moving on to the next slide. So basically clearing corporations are the entity which function as counterparty for all the trade being executed on the exchange to which they are affiliated with. So before even explaining to you the working of clearing corporation, let me take a moment and explain to you what is this affiliated part means to. So we have two major stock exchanges currently operating in India that is BSE and NSE. So we even have two clearing houses that are associated respectively with these two stock exchanges. For BSE that is Bombay Stock Exchange, we have Indian Clearing Corporation Limited that is ICCL and with respect to National Stock Exchange, we have National Securities Clearing Corporation Limited, NSCCL. The full form of these two clearing corporation and to whom they are affiliated to is very important with respect to your examination. Anytime a question can come up in your phase one or phase two exam. So better be thorough with them. So now let me explain to you the working of clearing corporation and make you understand how do they act as a counterparty for all the trades being executed on stock exchange. So for a trade to happen, we need to have two parties that is seller and a buyer. Seller sell the securities and buyer buys the security. Ideally, what should happen that seller should give the securities to the buyer and buyer in lieu of those securities shall give the money to the seller. But this is not the way the trades are being settled on the stock exchange. So what actually happens is that in between the two parties that is seller and buyer, we have a counterparty that is named as clearing corporation. The seller and buyer do not interact directly with each other, but with the clearing corporation in between which act as a counterparty. So in a case when seller want to sell and buyer want to buy, seller gives the share to clearing corporation and that clearing corporation when it receive money from the buyer, it transfers the shares to the buyer and the payment which is received from the buyer, it transfers it to the seller. And that's how the transaction gets completed. And in this way, clearing corporation act as a counterparty for the trades being settled on stock exchanges. So this is the basic crux of how clearing corporation act as a counterparty for the trades being executed on stock exchange. So now we have enough explanation with respect to this question and let's move back to our question number two and see now we can solve it or not. So moving back to our question number two, so now we know that clearing corporation is a counterparty which acts for the trades being settled on stock exchanges. So here option D becomes our correct answer. So let's move on to our next question. Moving on to the next slide. So as per question number three, who is responsible for liquidating collaterals in an event when a company defaults on its debentures? So basically a list of entities is given in options and we need to find out which of them is responsible for liquidating the collaterals in the event when a company defaults on its debentures. So as per the given options, option A says debenture holders itself, option B says SEVI, option C says SAT that is security appellate tribunal, 
ऑप्शन डी सेज डिवेंचर ट्रस्टी ऑप्शन ई सेज बोथ ए एंड डी दैट इज डिवेंचर होल्डर एंड डिवेंचर ट्रस्टी सो दिस क्वेश्चन इज एनालाइजिंग योर बेसिक नॉलेज विद रिस्पेक्ट टू डिवेंचर्स एंड डिवेंचर ट्रस्टी सो इफ यू नो द फैक्ट्स राइट यू कैन इजली आंसर दिस क्वेश्चन सो लेट्स लर्न समथिंग मोर अबाउट दिस क्वेश्चन इन द एक्सप्लेनेशन पार्ट सो मूविंग ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट स्लाइड सो बिफोर इवन जम्पिंग ऑन टू द केस वेयर बाय वी नो विच एंटिटी इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर लिक्विडेटिंग द कोलेक्ट्रल्स इन केस अ कंपनी डिफॉल्ट ऑन इट्स डिवेंचर लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड वॉट डिवेंचर एक्चुअली इज सो अ डिवेंचर इज अ डेट इंस्ट्रूमेंट एग्जीक्यूटेड बाय अ कंपनी एंड बाय दैट इंस्ट्रूमेंट इट एक्नोलॉजिज इट्स ऑब्लिगेशन टू रीपे अ सम एट अ स्पेसिफाइड रेट एंड ऑल्सो इट कैरीज अ इंटरेस्ट सो बेसिकली अ डिवेंचर इज जस्ट अ लाइक अ लोन और अ बॉन्ड एविडेंसिंग द फैक्ट दैट अ कंपनी इज लाइबल टू पे अ स्पेसिफाइड अमाउंट विद अ पर्टिकुलर इंटरेस्ट सो द कॉन्सेप्ट हेयर इन्वॉल्व इज वेरी सिंपल गाइज सो एज वी ऑल नो दैट इन ऑर्डर टू रेज मनी कंपनी इज लेफ्ट आउट विद टू प्रोमिनेंट ऑप्शन दैट इज बाय डेट रूट और इक्विटी रूट सो इशूइंग डिवेंचर कम्स अंडर डेट रूट बट इन सर्टन केसेज वेन द डेट साइज और द इशू ऑफ डेट इंस्ट्रूमेंट इज सो हाई दैट वी नीड सर्टन सिक्योरिटी फॉर दोज डेट इंस्ट्रूमेंट एज टू वेदर द कंपनी विल बी एबल टू रीपे दैट डेट और नॉट सो इन दैट केस वी अपॉइंट अ डिवेंचर ट्रस्टी सो लेट्स लर्न अबाउट दिस डिवेंचर ट्रस्टी इन द नेक्स्ट स्लाइड so what ideally happens is that when lending money through a debenture offering an investor will receive the debenture certificate entitling him or her to particular sum of money and at a specified rate of interest okay when a large amount of debenture stock is issued the company issuing stock may be required to use its property as collateral so whatever property that a company has or possesses that property has to be used as collateral against those debenture issued so in this scenario the property is mortgaged to the purchaser of the debenture and the deed is placed in a trust by property being mortgaged means that the original company which is having the possession of that property is having the right to use it but in case the company defaults on the debentures issued by it the debenture holders do have that right to liquidate that property and get their money back but it is not the debenture holder who directly liquidate the property and get their money back they appoint a official representative that is known as debenture trustee and that debenture trustee is responsible for liquidating the collateral of the trust in the event company defaults on its debentures so let's understand with the help of visuals so moving on to the next slide so suppose this is the company who has issued a lot of debentures to the public and this is the public who has subscribed to it so in case this company defaults people are not directly going to liquidate the property of this company it is the the middleman that is debenture trustee who will be liquidating this property and with respect to the sum that is gathered through the liquidation process all the money will be returned back to the investors so in a nutshell we can say that a debenture trustee serves as a liaison between the company that issues debenture and the debenture holder so that was enough explanation with respect to debenture trustee and debentures so let's move back to our question number 3 and let's see we can solve it now or not so moving back to our question number 3 So now we know that it is the debenture trustee who is responsible for liquidating the collaterals in an event a company fails to pay back its debt. So here option D becomes our correct answer. And now it's time to move to our next question. So moving on to the next slide. So as per question number four, given below are five entities which of them do not come under the ambit of market intermediary as per the SEBI Intermediary Regulation 2008. so we have been given with a list of five entities and we need to find out which of them do not come under the ambit of market intermediary as per the regulations 2008 the first entity given is banker to an issue the second entity is venture capital fund third entity is mutual fund and the next one is collective investment scheme that is cis and fifth one is cra that is credit rating agency so which of them do not come under the ambit of market intermediary So as given in this question uh, SEBI intermediary regulations 2008 explicitly mentions which entities can be classified as market intermediaries and which entities are explicitly out of the categories of market intermediary so let's learn something more about this question in the explanation part so moving on to the next slide so here in this slide we have been given with the list of entities which can be classified as market intermediaries here i'll not be explaining you the working and the meaning of all these mentioned entities because that will make video very long for that you are welcome to check out our video courses but anyways in a nutshell you'll get an idea as to which entities come under the market intermediary classification so the list goes like stock brokers sub brokers authorized person registrar and transfer agent merchant bankers banker to issue underwriters depository depository participant clearing corporation custodian of securities credit rating agency there are some more list of entities that are mentioned in the next slide 
and these entities are portfolio managers investment advisors and debenture trustee so these are the entity which come under the classification of market intermediaries and now let's learn about the entities which are explicitly excluded from the categories of market intermediaries these are foreign venture capital funds mutual funds venture capital funds and collective investment scheme there has been an explicit exclusion of these entities with respect to their classification in the market intermediaries so that was enough explanation with respect to this question so let's move back to our question number 4 and let's see now we can solve it or not so moving back to our question number 4 So let's again browse through the list of entities given here. So banker to an issue is an intermediary. Venture capital fund is not. Mutual fund is not. Collective investment scheme is not. Credit rating agency is definitely a market intermediary. So in a nutshell, we got to know that two, three, four is not coming under the purview or the ambit of market intermediary. So here option C becomes our correct answer. So now it's time to move to our last question, that is question number five. So let's move on to the next slide. So as per question number 5 as per SEBI intermediary regulation 2008 to whom does a stock broker submits its application seeking for grant of certificate of registration so in the case mentioned in this question stock broker is seeking for grant of certificate of registration and for this it is making an application and the question is asking to which entity will this stock broker submit its application to option a says clearing corporation option b says depository option c says stock exchange option d says securities exchange board of india option e says central government so this question is a fact based question and if you know the facts right you can easily answer this question so let's learn something more about this question in the explanation part so moving on to the next slide so if we delve into the details of regulation 3 of ab market intermediary regulations 2008 this part particularly deals with the application for grant of certificate so let's learn in detail about this part in the next slide So in general when any intermediary want to seek certificate of registration then that intermediary has to file an application to the board that is SEBI and that application has to be filed in form A supported with application fees but in case of certain entities or intermediaries which are explicitly mentioned in these regulation rather than filing directly to the board they have to file with the respective entities so suppose that intermediary is trading member or a stock broker or a sub broker then it has to file its application to stock exchange if that entity or intermediary is clearing member then it has to file respectively with the clearing corporation and if that entity is depository participant then it has to file it with the depository respective party shall examine the eligibility of the applicant in terms of these regulations relevant regulations and the rules regulations or bylaws of the concerned parties and forward the same application with the application fees to the board that is sebi along with the recommendation as early as possible but not later than 30 days of receipt of that complete application so these three entities that is stock exchange clearing corporation or depository when get an application they will examine or assess the eligibility of the applicant and then cross check it with the relevant regulations and rules and the bylaws of the concerned party and then forward this application with the fees to the board along with the recommendation and that should happen within the time span of 30 days from the receipt of that complete application so i hope that this was a comprehensive explanation of regulation 3 of sebi market intermediary regulations 2008 so now let's move back to our question number 5 and let's see now we can solve it or not so as per sebi intermediary regulation 2008 to whom does a stock broker submit its application seeking for grant of certificate of registration so by the understanding that we gathered from the explanation section we know that stock broker first submits its application to the stock exchange so here option c becomes our correct answer so now we are approaching to the end of this video in this slide i have collated all the answers you can cross check your answers if you want to this is an extra question for you guys answer to which i'll not be discussing in this video i would really encourage you to pause this video here go through this question and put your answers in the comment section below well that's it guys for this video if you want to know more about edutab you are welcome to log on to www.edutab.co.in If you have any queries please drop them at hello@edutab.co.in we'll be more than happy to resolve them for further assistance you can even contact us on this mentioned mobile number through call or whatsapp so if you found the content of this video to be informative and useful please don't forget to hit that like button and for receiving continuous update regarding the new videos being uploaded by our channel you can subscribe to our channel and press that bell icon so that's it guys thanks for watching happy learning bye bye